Hi, my name is Cheryl Bell. Anne Marie Davy. My name is Margaret. I'm Janet Tenney. I'm Jane Andrews. I'm Janine Sherry. My name is Sherry Steinbach. Hi, I'm Rose Lumpenner, registered dietitian. I was hired by the HEB Grocery Company in 1997 as their culinary and nutrition dietitian. This was a very exciting new field for me, being that I had been in the healthcare side for almost 30 years. So my job was primarily in the own brand product development department. And of course, doing the cooking and heating instructions and recipe development for these products. At that time, uh, no one really had a job description for me. So I literally uh, wrote my own. And as time went on, I was able to add more items to this uh, job description, which included uh, community outreach and working with other departments with their projects. This was a great new profession for a dietitian to work with a grocery company that dealt with the consumers who buy the food. I had long been associated with the healthcare side of dietetics. Well, in the beginning, no one really understood what a registered dietitian really did. The most impactful program I did at HEB was when HEB became the premier sponsor for the Diabetes Expo. And of course, I developed several recipes that I would be demonstrating at this expo. The public affairs director asked me to do a TV segment with him to publicize the event. And at the last minute, the public affairs director decided not to uh, be into the segment with me. So I had the whole show to myself. I was able to do this recipe in two minutes. Anyway, by the time I got home or back at work, there was a big buzz about my TV segment. And so HEB decided to uh, schedule TV segments in all of the areas where HEB has uh, grocery stores. And these segments would be featuring healthy uh, focuses on particular holidays. And uh, over the 15 years I was there, uh, I actually did about 500 TV segments. The dietitian no longer is viewed as a, uh, a person caring for sick people in the hospital. They are the ones that are teaching people how to buy the groceries, the foods that sustain their families, how to give them information on how to improve their health and well-being. The retail dietitian needs to uh, uh, see is the fact that they have to have a strong culinary background. I was hired by Hannaford Brothers Company um, located in Scarborough, Maine in 1990 as manager of consumer affairs. I had a staff who assisted me in responding to customer inquiries on a variety of food issues. We had an 800 number, which was located on all of the store brand products. So customers could call with any sorts of questions. I was the only RD in a very large corporate environment with 100 locations in five different states and trying to communicate to all of those employees about what I did and who I was and getting the information out across such a large group of retail locations. I had a weekly cable TV spot called the Minute Menu. And that enabled me to teach our customers how to shop, cook, and prepare healthy meals in a minute or less. I was a food and nutrition expert. So I had the capacity to take the science-based information and translate it into language that customers could understand. Food safety has been an increasingly um, imminent um, issue, and it seems to be more and more important to the consumers, and they really need to understand all of the processes that go behind product procurement, where products come from, how products are handled, and 
feeling like we're building trust with those customers that they understand where their food comes from and that it's been handled with utmost care. And then the other challenge that we have is staying abreast of a rapidly, rapidly changing product environment. I think it's going to be critical for all food retailers to have the capacity and of an RD. I was hired in 1982 by Safeway Stores to be their corporate nutritionist. I worked for Safeway for about 12 years. The position was located in the advertising department at their corporate headquarters in Oakland, California. The idea that it was located in advertising was strictly because they knew it would be a large print program and that we would need to make use of uh, photographers, graphic designers, copywriters, because the store was going to be, excuse me, the program was going to be in all 2000 US stores and eventually in Canada. So we did a bi-monthly uh, full color food and nutrition magazine with recipes and photography and nutrition articles. We had monthly pamphlets that uh, went out to a display unit in every store. The stores were supposed to have, I emphasize supposed to, uh, have a display on the end aisle in each store. We had newspaper columns. People actually read the newspaper um, in those days. We had um, point of sale programs for produce, for meat, and we also did a uh, shelf labeling program. That was probably the biggest program uh, that we implemented over the years. So I did a lot of speaking across the country, both inside the company to regional store manager meetings, as well as outside in the community. And I knew early on that to be successful and for the program to be successful, that I was really gonna have to learn very quickly a lot about the supermarket industry so that I'd be viewed as a credible you know, program and resource to those store managers. Being a female, a young female in a predominantly male dominated uh, uh, industry was a challenge. I found out later on that part of the reason that the, I got so much support from store managers is because they thought I was John Bell's daughter. John Bell was the president of Safeway, so they just assumed I was the corporate nutritionist in this very, you know, high level important position in the company because I was the president's daughter. Part of my approach was also to get the employees on board. If if I could show the value to them personally of nutrition and health and all the messages that we had, I felt that they would then be good ambassadors of our program and be more interested in getting those programs out to the uh, shoppers. There is so rewarding for me to see all the uh, RDs that are in the retail stores. I think some of the biggest change is all the technology. It's all the opportunities and all the communication channels that are available. And, and I hope that retailers really embrace the opportunities that RDs bring to their business. And I think we bring so much to the plate. I was hired as Giant Food Incorporated's first nutritionist in June of 1975 and worked for them for 30 years through June of 2005. I soon found that there were more consumer needs to address. Small things like awful recipes on giant brand products. These cost the company not only in complaints and reimbursements, but also in image. It was important to show value to the company, even if it seemed small. I also drafted comments for Giant on issues raised by proposed regulations from the Food and Drug Administration and the Department of Agriculture. And there were times where I found myself testifying before Congress for Giant from the consumer perspective, but also from within the company. We tested a simple kids program we developed with an outside creative person called Eating Right is Out of Sight. And then I got a phone call from the National Heart, Lung and Blood Institute asking if we'd be interested in developing a cooperative program with them on nutrition and heart disease. In the late 70s, we kicked off a program called Eat for Health with NHLBI. That was followed by Special Diet Alert with the Food and Drug Administration and Foods for Health with the National Cancer Institute. These programs and their evaluations carried us through the 80s. In the 90s, I began a diabetes tour program with funding from the pharmaceutical industry. I did the training of the dietitians and developed the tour program. Ultimately, we were able to put about 10,000 people through those diabetes tours. While I was successful doing large and small nutrition programs, 
in a retail setting, it was partly the times. Being part of the Consumer Affairs Department and reporting directly to the president made all the difference. We were not viewed as part of advertising or marketing per se. We remained the consumer's ambassadors. I established my credentials with multiple successes and came to be useful to many departments in the company. I worked with the legal department on labeling and regulatory issues, managing new labeling requirements for giant brand products with grocery, advertising, and creative departments, and working closely with our pharmacy department on the diabetes tours. What's been the biggest challenge for retail nutrition in the past 20 years is that the movement of most RDs has gone into marketing departments or as working as independent consultants. Price is such a driver these days that it is essential to know the other qualities that consumers want in private label. The RD needs training not only in clinical nutrition, but also in regulatory issues, food science, and marketing. Understanding consumer interests and a focus on consumer needs and wants is and always will be paramount. Thank you for the opportunity to share my experiences in working in retail food nutrition. Thank you. I do predominantly regulatory work now. I do nutrition labeling for food manufacturers and restaurants, but I started my career as a dietitian in Richmond, Virginia in the mid-1980s, and I started as a clinical dietitian in a community hospital. And I think that was a really good way to start before I ventured into the grocery industry because not only did you develop and hone your clinical skills, you also created a really good network of health professionals that you kind of then bring into the retail industry with you um, as you transitioned. I found that one of the biggest challenges in getting started in the 80s um, with a grocery store was just getting your foot in the door. So when I moved from Boston after graduate school down to Richmond, Virginia, there happened to be a really wonderful grocery chain um, that was locally based and family owned only in the second generation. It was called Ucrops Supermarkets. And it was a little bit of a higher end grocery store and they were famously known for their customer service. So I knew this was going to be a really good fit for being a dietitian in a grocery setting. And what I thought was that I'll just, you know, call them and obviously they'll see the light and want to hire me immediately. Well, of course, that's not what happened. And in fact, I began what was a two year letter writing campaign to the owners, trying to convince them that they desperately needed me to make their 50 year old company successful. Um, it eventually worked. I was very fortunate to have find the right company at the right time. But I also think one of the factors in, in my becoming successful as a retail dietitian was in fact being tenacious and having a genuine um, passion for what it was you wanted to do. I was convinced that in order to tell people um, the best things to eat and the best ways to help them improve their health was actually in the place where they were buying their foods. I think as competition for food dollars continues to increase. Every organization is looking for a way to distinguish themselves from their competition. So if you have an idea that can help that company um, set themselves apart from the competition and, and, and drive their business, then you're going to be successful. Diversify your portfolio a little bit. Consider adding other skills to your uh, repertoire, such as culinary skills. Um, you know, why have to invite a chef in to do a culinary demonstration uh, while you're the nutritionist? Why don't you do both parts of that? Be the culinary expert who also has to be, happens to be the registered dietitian. Um, I think having more skills in marketing so you can better understand, um, you know, marketing and advertising goals and expectations so that you can speak to that a little bit more um, intelligently in a grocery setting. I think the more you can bring to the table in an organization, uh, obviously the more marketable you are. My first real supermarket job in retail was at Spartan Stores, now known as Spartan Nash. But at Spartan Stores, I was hired as a consumer affairs coordinator. And I worked there for over 13 years and ended up being director of customer service and consumer affairs. And after Spartan Stores, I moved to Meyer. Meyer was the first Supercenter store um, out there in the industry and um, spent another 13 and a half years at Meyer. Um, we had a team of six dietitians that I managed, um, including myself. It was one of the best teams that I've ever worked with. We were regional dietitians and uh, really tried to impact the lives of the customers that shopped our stores. And we sold food, we had pharmacies and fitness equipment. So it was a great place to talk about total wellness 
when I was at Spartan Stores, the program that I just loved that we created was called Make Meal Time Easy. So every one of our stores, the 350 uh, independent retailers that Spartan Stores served had recipe cards and menu planning um, educational materials, materials in every one of their stores. And we, we just got great feedback on that program. And um, to this day, I find a lot of customers are asking for the same. I want recipes, I want shopping lists, I just want you to make it easy for me to eat healthy at home. If I think about some of the factors that contributed to my success in retail, um, it has to be the people I've met and the networking that um, I was able to do. Um, I am on my own now, I have my own business, but in the last several years, of course, the Retail Dietitian Business Alliance RDBA came into being and just taught me a great deal still about the business of retail and continually learning. I really wish there was an RDBA out there when I, when I first started, but the fact that they're there now is just tremendous. As the supermarkets change, I think we're going to see growth in all of the fresh departments, prepared foods, meat and seafood, the produce department. We're going to see more meal kits and more prepared foods. When I started out, I never even thought about being a supermarket dietitian and working in that environment. And I have to say it's been one of the best careers I have ever had. I was hired to answer nutrition questions, but the challenge for me was that there was really no job description. It was listening to customers, understanding what was possible, and working to develop programs to serve them. In terms of the challenge though, it was somewhat of an uphill battle to convince other decision makers that health was important. They would say, eh, you know, people only really care about the price. Or, you know, they might speak about health, but not really do anything about health. I probably had the most impact uh, with the beginning of a program called Strive for Five. It was our produce nutrition education program. Remember I said that not everybody else was convinced that health made a difference. We saw that health made a difference. It made a huge difference, especially when we took advantage of the power of our people to help share messages, to help uh, customers understand how to use products. So it was really that help and health connection that really made a difference. And I think the, from there it just snowballed. All the other departments wanted me to work on their programs. In terms of my success, I think a big part of it might be, and this is very common at Wegmans, that, that we like to collaborate. We have fun when we're working together. And, and that's the kind of environment that I like. I don't need to be the star of the show. It, it's fine to see others take the message and go with it. If they get credit for it, that's fine. It's all about seeing change happen. However, I'll tell you that I have a couple of characteristics. Uh, one is that I can be very stubborn and I can also be very persistent. So if something doesn't work the first time, I'll keep working on it till I get it right. And that's probably a good quality to have as a supermarket dietitian. The biggest change I've seen over the years is just how uh, everyone recognizes that health is important. It's important to our employees, it's important to our executives because of the healthcare costs. It's very important to our customers. So as we look at that, it is something that really does mean that a registered dietitian can help because we have the information to help our employees and to help our customers with health. The vision of the future role of the uh, RDN. I believe it will be to combine these three um, key issues. The first one is is trust because having customers trust the information that you provide when something as vital as health is being shared, I think that trust is, is key. I think registered dietitians will need to help, find ways to help, find ways to extend themselves to reach not just 10 but hundreds, thousands of people with their messages. And that kind of draws into the, the technology. Um, I'm telling our staff of RDNs that the days of workshops, tours, and um, uh, brochures is gone. We need to find ways to get information through digital means. And so that creativity that dietitians can bring will be so important. Of all these, I think that trust is the single most important thing. You lose trust with your customers, 
you're not playing straight with them, I, it will it will hurt in the long run. My first role in retail dietetics was in 1974, and I worked for what was Brockton Public Markets became Shaw's Supermarkets, which is a regional supermarket chain in New England. And I had originally worked for the company when I was in high school and college. So I thought it would be a good idea to have a, a dietitian work in the environment where people made their logical choices for what they were going to buy. Uh, I think I was about 20 years premature in my thinking, but um, I learned a lot in the meantime. My original title was Director of Consumer Affairs, and even though I was part-time. And eventually, I became the first female vice president of Shaw's in um, 1992. The dietitians were viewed as people who had a lot of credentials, but they really didn't understand the supermarket business. And the hope was that I would be able to go in and create an environment for that supermarket chain that would allow them to become a community resource in nutrition and information about food. And that was my long-term goal. But you have to respect the people that you're working with for what they bring and contribute to the business. Um, what you want to do is become part of the brand identity of that supermarket. My colleagues really did not believe a credentialed dietitian belonged in the supermarket. They felt that it was really beneath the professional skills that a dietitian had. And I just thought that they were not enlightened, I guess is the best way to say it. After quite a while, um, my, my thinking proved true. I think you have to be a team player. You do have a skill set that they don't have, but it's how you can incorporate that skill set uh, into the business so that it becomes part of that company's brand. So you want to be create programs and information that is um, obviously truthful, but presented in a way that it becomes valuable to the customers and people start asking for it. And that's when uh, people will look upon you as a valued resource within the company. You want to do something that nobody else can do. That should always be your goal.